Welcome to Fun with Facepalm. This is your host, Dallas. I found some stories of people doing some really stupid things, and I've counterbalanced that with pictures of cute animals. So I hope you enjoy. Here we go. I work as a salesperson for a well-known garden center. The garden business brings out all sorts of strange people. This is just one of the stories. Hi, are you finding everything all right, ma'am? Yeah, but I noticed that the trees aren't certified gluten-free. Do you know if the fruit that your trees produce are gluten-free? That took me aback. Yeah, the trees you're looking at aren't part of the wheat family. Therefore, they don't produce any gluten. Right, but it's the fruit I'm concerned about. The fruit doesn't contain any gluten, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And she walks off. My neighbor's in his mid-40s, and he's a child of a trust fund, so he's always had people available at his whim. He's never worked a day in his life, and he's a total moron. During the day, he has two nannies taking care of his kids, and his wife works. I missed a package delivery while I was at work, so the delivery company leaves a ticket stating that the package is at my neighbor's house. I head over with the ticket in hand. Oh uh, yeah. Hi, I wasn't in to get my parcel, and they left it at your house. Can I get it? And I show him the ticket. He looks immediately confused. Uh, sorry, no. The nanny deals with stuff like that. Can you come back when she's here? I kind of need it. Did the post not deliver any parcels here? Why did they deliver your parcel here? I wasn't in. Why not? Look, my parcel was dropped off here. Can you please check? He looks around his feet and picks up the closest parcel. He hands it to me without a word, then he shuts the door. The parcel was way too small for what I was expecting. I checked the address slip, and it was my neighbor's address with his wife's name on it. I ring the bell again several times until he eventually answers again. What now? There must have been some confusion. This is your wife's parcel. What do you want with it then? I don't want it. I want mine. Can you please look? Taking the parcel back, he looks around his feet. There's nothing here. Look, can you please come back when the nanny's here? She deals with stuff like this. Well, can you check in the front room or something for a box with this address on it? And I hand the ticket to him. Please? He disappears for a few seconds and comes back with a very large box and an equally confused expression on his face. Huh, there's this, but it's got the wrong address on it. Yep, that's what I'm after. Why'd they deliver it here? I'm not this person here. That's me. It's what I'm here for. Well, how do you know it was here? Cause the delivery company left a ticket. Can I please have it now? As he hands it over, he says, Why didn't they just deliver it to you? I took the parcel, and I just rolled my eyes at the last question. I don't think leaving post with a neighbor is a difficult concept. We have an order for a customer being fulfilled by a third-party supplier but the customer requested to cancel it within a day of placing the order. The fulfillment company had asked us to contact them by phone instead of by email in cases such as this. This is because they don't always have time to check the emails. We tried to contact them for two days, but we're unable to get through. The phone just keeps ringing and ringing and we get voicemail. We left them multiple voicemails and this being on both of their numbers, but we never heard back and the order was still showing as being processed, so we emailed them. On the third day, someone finally picked up. They told us that they had already shipped the order, but they hadn't had time to mark it as ship. After asking them why they didn't contact us upon receiving the voicemails, they were genuinely astonished to find out that they had a voicemail system. Upon checking with our coworkers, more astonishment was created at the discovery they had a voicemail system. And then they decided to go back and look for the answering machine to find out how to use it. We decided not to use them anymore. My brother works for a call center in our hometown in Scotland. He has a lot of stories about things like mobile phone sales campaigns, where the workers were never, despite repeated requests, given the phone specs, so they had to improvise. One of my favorites is when they were dealing with applications for student loans. This is all done on paper forms, with a lot of to and fro via post, and he gets a phone call. Hello, 
I haven't heard back about my student loan application, and it's close to term start. Thanks for calling. May I take your details, please? My brother checks and finds no record of him in the system. After his usual check for hideous misspelled names and street names, I'm sorry, sir, but there's no record of you in the system. It looks like we haven't received your application. What? You haven't received it? How can you say that when I'm holding the application form in my hand? Well, I take it you're not studying physics, sir. Or you would know that objects cannot exist in two places at the same time. Eventually, he got the guy to calm down, and he helped him. But he still wondered how a guy like that managed to qualify for university, or even deal with daily life. I'm working at a meat department of a well-known organic food store. A customer comes up and inquires about the chickens in the display case. Note, these are raw, fully plucked, very dead chickens. They were pasture raised and humanely killed. Hello, how can I help you today? I need a chicken. Sure, I can get that wrapped up for you. Which one would you like? These are too big. It's just me at home. Aren't there any smaller ones? They don't get much smaller than this, but I can offer you half a chicken instead. Half? Half a chicken? They come in halves? Yes, it's quite simple. I'll take care of it right now. I grab a chicken from the case and walk to the cutting board. I cut the chicken neatly in half, using a meat cleaver and a mallet. Then I take the two halves back to the customer, so she can choose which side she'd like. Which half would you like? You cut it in half? Right in half? A knife and a hammer? Yeah, it's pretty simple to do. You could have even done it at home if you... She cuts me off. No! That was cruel! I don't want it anymore! That was cruel! The poor chicken! You split it in half! With a hammer and a knife! She marched away angrily, while I stood there, flabbergasted and holding two halves of a chicken. I work at a video game store, and a customer comes in to return a Wii console. Do you have the receipt? Oh, it's in my car. I'll go get it. He comes back in, and he hands me a crumpled receipt, folded over. I look at the receipt. Sir, this receipt is for a different store. So? So you can't get a refund if you didn't purchase it from here. But you sell these here. So I should be able to return it here. Yes sir, we sell them here. But you gave your money to a different store, not to our store. So we can't return the money that we never had in our possession. That's a loss for our company and a gain for the competitor. I wouldn't even be able to sell this system as new because it's been opened and played. Well, I may speak to your manager. I am the manager on duty at this time, but I will tell you that even corporate office will tell you the same thing. But you have Wheeze here. I don't understand the problem. I was mentally slamming my head into the counter. I work at a fast food restaurant. I'm running the front line, rolling burritos for customers. Then a family comes up. Of the five, four are very quick to order for and get rung up. The fifth, the mother takes the time to ask about how everything is prepared before she asks for her burrito. Assuming that she might be someone from corporate, I explain, to the best of my knowledge, how the food is made. She gets to the end of the line, then she asks, Do you have any guacamole? Yes, we do. Would you like some? Ugh. Do you have any guacamole that doesn't have any avocado? No, our guacamole is made with avocado. Well, can you look in the back? Ma'am, we don't have any guacamole that is made without avocado. I mean, guacamole is like 90% avocado, so maybe you're thinking of something else. I try to stay patient, especially since the line is building behind her. She's glaring at me and she says, How would you know how guacamole is made? You're not in the kitchen, so it's not like you know how to make any of the food. So to humor her, and to finish off her order, I go through the swinging doors in the kitchen. Count to ten, then return. Sorry ma'am, but we don't have any guacamole in the back without avocados. That's okay, I don't mind having avocado in my guac. So can I get some? I finish her order and I pass it on to the cashier. I couldn't be any happier to see a customer leave. 
I work in a government call center. Occasionally, customers have appointees to speak and handle affairs for them. I receive a call from a man who is clearly inebriated, but we finally get through the security questions. I realize he has an appointee, so I am unable to make changes to his account. I'm sorry, sir. I can't change your information without your appointee's permission. That's fine. She's with me now. I'll put her on. A moment later and I hear a voice. Hello, who is this? I'm so-and-so. I'm the appointee. Sir, I know it's you. Is the appointee really available for me to speak to? Yeah, I'm the appointee. Sir. Yeah? He pauses and realizes what he just said. Who am I really speaking with? My name is Appoint... My, my name is so-and-so. I'm the appointee. After several failed attempts to speak with his appointee, I had to end the call. He didn't even bother to disguise his voice. I work at a call center and I get an inbound call. Good morning. My name is so-and-so. How may I help you? Hey, can I have your number so I can call you back? Well, sir, you're calling right now. Yeah, but can I have your number? There's a moment of silence. I mean, is this guy for real? Okay. I work at a bookstore, and I have a customer come up and ask me this question. Can you show me where I can find a thirctionary? I'm sorry, a what? A thirctionary. Do you mean a dictionary? No, but they're kind of like a dictionary. Okay, let's go take a look in that section. I take her over to where we keep the dictionaries, and she grabs a thesaurus off the shelf. Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, you meant a thesaurus. Yeah, a thirctionary. Okay, well, let me know if you have any more questions. I will. Thank you. If you enjoyed these stories, please leave a like and subscribe for more. All stories from Reddit and other external sites are linked in the description below. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can send it to my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com. And for just $1 a month at Patreon, you can get advanced audio broadcast. The link is in the description.